long time ago, I saw a film called Only God Forgives, an arthouse film directed by Nicholas Winding Refn, starring Ryan Gosling, that was so deeply steeped in style that I left the theater debating with myself if it had any substance within it at all, as I had no idea what the film was about or what it was trying to say after watching it. But after some time passed, and after doing some research, I came to the conclusion that it did have substance in it, but it was heavily obscured behind obtuse audio and visual metaphors and references. The audience was expected to draw their own conclusions on a lot of things, as very little in the film was communicated well to be truly set in stone. It was a pretentious arthouse film, and it was trying to test me. On what, I have no idea. On top of that, its marketing did a terrible job communicating that that's what it would be. The plot wasn't communicated well enough to know what was happening, why, or how. On that note, I just finished playing Signalis, a cosmic horror game that, upon finishing it, left me with a similar feeling. But unlike when I finished Only God Forgives, I wasn't angry about it this time, as this game had no bad marketing to tarnish the experience, and the plot in-game was communicated well enough to explain some of what was happening, but not really the why or the how. On top of that, the gameplay and minimal storytelling was enough to keep me invested enough to reach the confounding conclusion that left me more intrigued than anything, asking a lot of questions and feeling a fair bit of emotions. I felt like I had truly experienced a deeply existential cosmic horror that left me feeling empty, wanting, and confused. While this game confused me, it made me feel a kind of dread that I hadn't experienced from a video game before. Let's talk about it. Having played through the game, I have some idea of what this game was on about. Okay, so this story is very hard to explain, <laughs> especially without making a two hour long video essay. And as far as I'm concerned, this guy already did that and he did an exceptional job. He only has about 4,600-ish subscribers as of me recording this, despite making one of the most well put together and interesting deep dives I've watched in a while. He states in the video that it took him six months to make. That is commitment. I'll leave the link for you in the description. Go watch it, subscribe and like it. I'm also gonna recommend this video as the complete opposite. It's very short, very sweet, and it is a very inaccurate, shitpost fueled <laughs> summary. <laughs> summary. We're surrounded by fish, horny fish. You know what that means, fish orgy. I really like this game's community. <laughs> After playing the game and having understood some of it, and then watching the deep dive, and then thinking about it some more and letting it gestate, my head still hurts. Anyways. Avoiding spoilers makes talking about the story objectively pretty quick. You are what is known as a replica, a construct based on a person that is used to assist actual humans, known as gestalts, in this setting. That's a human person. You are what is known as an Elster unit, specifically Model 512, one with various forms of training that make it a capable warrior and survivor, a perfect companion to travel space with. Your Elster unit was paired with someone, but upon being ordered to wake up after your ship is crashed, this person was gone. So begins your quest into darkness, searching for this missing person who is said to be a woman named Alina Seo. You journey forward and climb down a red hole and make your way through a small tunnel to find out that someone lived down here and brought a copy of The King in Yellow by Robert W. Chambers to space for some reason. That's a pretty good book, I guess. It doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. Anyways, you touch it because you, uh, yeah. And then the title sequence happens and it is atmospheric as hell.
As you journey further into the mining facility, you realize that everything you think you know is wrong. And as you start to learn what is true, you begin to question that as well. The rabbit hole gets deeper. Dream and reality fracture, intersect, stray from each other, and leave you lost in an existential hell until the end. That's really all I can truly say about the story without revealing spoilers. But overall, this story is an ever-deepening baratherum of questions about the meaning of life, the meaning of dreams, how far someone will go for someone they love, the validity of machine life versus human life, and the unknown dangers that lie beyond the veil in the darker reaches of space. It is a fascinating tale. This story is the most confusing thing I've ever played through, I think. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. This game is a cosmic horror experience, so you can kind of throw having to make sense out the window, especially if you're diving into the depths of peril, horror, confusion, insanity, and reality bending that can come with this genre. Having just finished the game, I can tell you that it was definitely an experience. An experience worth having especially if you want to be challenged. This game did some very interesting things with every tool at its disposal to make you feel unsettled and as if everything going on around you was just wrong. Even the story itself. While I definitely understood some of it, I am still left with so many questions. Questions that I feel that if I were to receive the answers to, it might fill this pit I feel in my psyche. But I am sure those answers are complicated. This game does not give you a happy ending. The whole purpose of this game was to find someone so you could kill them and put them out of their misery. You go through a nightmare just to kill your lover and then die with the very bittersweet notion that you kept your promise to do so. A promise that you knew you had made, but you weren't aware of the exact details of the promise until it was around the time for you to keep it. It is so bleak, and I love it. There is a great deal of this story that I assume we the audience are left to our own devices to fill in. Either that, or I missed a bunch of references and metaphors that were present in the story that were meant to help clarify things. Both are equally possible. I think manifesting this feeling of unfettered confusion is a great achievement for a cosmic horror experience. It answered some questions for us, but in giving us those answers, they leave us the audience asking even more questions. I feel like I was trapped in an art house cosmic horror film with a well-researched, poetic, and depressed mad genius of a director in the chair whose friends all tragically died in a plane crash the day before writing it. Oh god, there are more endings, and they are also all depressing as well. So much so, that the ending I described was the cheeriest of them all. Dear God. Signalis is a somber and unsettling experience. A quote that appears around the halfway point of your journey is, perhaps, this is hell. As I mentioned in my Darkwood video, I'm someone who is fascinated by other people's interpretations of what hell could be like. It fascinates me because I have a fantasy setting that I world build as a hobby, and hell is a part of it. But the version of hell that Signalis presents is something that I am enchanted by. The concept and story of this game Captivates me. This game opens up many facets of dread within body horror, existential and cosmic horror, but for me, the game truly unsettling me comes from the lack of stability of what was happening around me and within Elster's mind. It makes the world itself feel uncanny. Like the facility you are in is a liminal space between the real world, a dream, and hell. These worlds collide on screen and are communicated to be around you in many ways through sudden location shifts, sudden frequency shifts on your radio playing dissonant, unknowable sounds in your ear, your screen being crowded with various visuals you can't interact with, obstructing your sight, how at any point the floor can be ripped open and a monster can crawl out of it. In this version of hell, nothing makes sense, nothing is familiar, nothing will help you understand it lest you dive in completely and lose yourself. This game achieved a level of cosmic horror I have never experienced. I ended the game with one thought about the experience rattling around my head. Everything you thought you knew is wrong. Everyone you loved is gone. Everything you planned was for naught. Things will never be the way that they should. You can change nothing. You are alone, and death is the only escape. talk about gameplay now.
The gameplay of Signalis is designed to replicate the feeling of early Resident Evil titles, with a top-down view, slow, laborious movements, and lots of exploring and scrounging for ammo and items to complete puzzles. Getting used to the movement is a big step to saving ammunition, as you can dodge around your enemies that also have slow and heavy movements. There isn't much to say about the gunplay other than that it is rigid by design. It really ramps up the horror of having a crazed maniac zombie thing coming at you when you have to take a good couple seconds to raise your weapon and line up a clean shot. Also with most of your enemies, you have to weaken them to the point that they tumble to the floor and flail wildly, leaving you the opportunity to stomp on them to finish them off. Everything in this game is designed to make you take your time and be methodical, but the plot and your dwindling resources are demanding that you get to the bottom of whatever this messed up rabbit hole is as soon as you can. The enemies in this game are designed perfectly within the game's themes, and they are treated with the utmost seriousness. The enemies in this game are mostly the same, being shambling zombie people and replicas. Some have riot shields and some brandish knives. There's also these, uh, things. But there are exceptions, being the bosses. The final boss, who I won't dive into, and these hulking monsters. The mining robots being piloted by replicas who've lost their sanity and been corrupted. These lumbering hulks will mess you up if you're not careful, as you cannot be overconfident when you are within mining laser distance. The cutscene when you're first introduced to them, I never thought I could picture what somebody's soul melting away might look like, but I think I could now. Thanks, Signalis. Dear God. There's more. No. Oh, by the way, there's also these. That's gonna kill me. That's real. That lives with us on her. Signalis truly embraces older video game inventory mechanics by having six slots that you can put anything in, no matter how big or small. It can be tiresome sometimes to only carry six things, as you have a lot of backtracking to grab items if you've found too many of them along your trip to where you're going, which you most certainly will. All I will say is that in a mining facility, it is strange that nobody had a backpack that I could equip. Look at Elster, okay? She doesn't have many pockets. Come on now, a backpack would have been immensely useful for these units to carry around stuff if they needed to. Anyways, backpack and backtrack tangent aside, I love games that have inventory management systems and Signalis does, despite it being a pain at times. Managing bullets is hard work in this game, as you do not find very many of them throughout the story. So not only do you have to get creative with your movement to save ammunition and to face the horrors head on by dodging them, when you inevitably make a mistake and get hurt, you better believe you are questioning whether or not to use the healing items that you have because yes, you don't heal automatically. I know this story is a somber, bittersweet, cosmic horror masterpiece, but something that feels truly, deeply, unbelievably bad is finding ammunition for a gun that you're not carrying at the time. The true horror of Signalis. <laughs> ammunition. Either you don't have room to carry it, or you do, and then you have to go run back to the safe room, or risk happening across a story progression item and having to destroy the ammo you just found to make room for the story item. It feels very bad. The menu, however, for the inventory is so cool, it is a neat contraption that feels like a mixture of a Pip-Boy and an old arcade machine that has a really cool interface that you navigate with your keyboard. It's one of the coolest inventory menus I've seen in a while, and its design immersed me into the setting further. While talking about the inventory menus, I just want to quickly touch on the map system, which is also pretty good when it's allowed to function in the story. That is, because there are certain areas where the map just straight up doesn't work. Um, not like as a bug, but like by design, the map just straight up doesn't work. The only complaint that I have with the map system in this game is that when you're looking for that last quest item and you think you've checked every room a thousand times, and you have, you don't just think it, you have in fact checked every room a thousand times. There's no indicator to say that the room is all clear. It's the same problem I had in System Shock. Thankfully, it didn't last as long as System Shock, but it still happened. If they did make some sort of system to improve the map system by somehow letting you know that you were done searching a room without giving you spoilers. It's a difficult balance, I'm sure. It may not even be possible, but yeah, it kind of sucks. All I know is that running through the same rooms over and over again is not necessarily the best time. Long story short, the best piece of advice I can give you for this game is search every room thoroughly and then write down that you've searched that room thoroughly. Make sure you mark down if there's something in that room that might need you to come back. 
because the game is not going to help you. Important note, the safe room boxes. They transfer items between them as if they have portals between them. So don't worry about transferring items box to box physically. If this game didn't have chest portal functionality, it would probably not be regarded so highly. So overall, the inventory system, while I typically like these kinds of systems, the amount of limitation feels kind of bad. And I know it would feel a lot better if maybe like your held weapon didn't count as being in your pocket, or if you could just find additional pockets. I know the developer is really big on the number six in this game as it appears fairly regularly. And as we all know, Which is why I had the thought that this game was related to hell before the quote I mentioned earlier flashed on my screen. I understand if the developers didn't put in extra pockets because of the motif of the number six. And I would respect the commitment to the themes of a descent into hell if it just didn't feel as bad. Which I guess is the point, you know, hell isn't super convenient. But towards the end of the game, especially when you get to the part where there's a puzzle involving tarot cards, this inventory system is going to make you want to slam your face on your desk. Speaking of puzzles. Name a more iconic duo than old survival horror games and puzzles. Every villain from old survival horror games is just an asshole with a penchant for forcing people to complete puzzles. They're all just various flavored jigsaws if he was hyper fixated on puzzles rather than traps. Hello, Steve. You are a man who does not value time. Yours or anyone else's. This is a Lego set of a bomb defusal kit. You have 90 minutes to assemble it and disarm the bomb in the room with you. Then you will scan the QR code the diffusal kit will make if you assemble it correctly. This will take you to a website with a riddle. This riddle has a one word answer. The dictionary is full of words. You will search the dictionary for it. Signalis being a love letter to those old titles, it of course has a bunch of puzzles. 90% of which are puzzles that did not break my immersion and were fairly satisfying to complete. But there were some that shattered my immersion completely. Old lockboxes having a puzzle to get in makes sense. Finding codes for safes is fun and makes sense. Key hunting is fun and makes sense. The radio frequency puzzles made sense and were my favorite. They were cool, I haven't seen anything like that before in gaming. But having a room installed in a mining facility that uses the notes of a madman's dreams to align tarot cards in a specific pattern on a projector to shine an ultraviolet light on them to reveal hidden symbols that determine a specific lunar cycle to open a door that is on the other side of the facility is a bit fucking much. In my System Shock video, I mentioned that I typically don't like puzzles. One of the main reasons why is because they often pull me the player out of my immersion from the game and leave me asking very simply, what the fuck? Who would build this and why? Is the puzzle I just mentioned a great puzzle? No. Should the corporation in the story that funded the construction of the mining facility in a future where I assume resources are scarce due to the fact that they are establishing mining facilities on distant planets explode the man or machine whose idea it was to sacrifice a good chunk of company dollars and resources to have a fucking chuckle and build a puzzle? Probably yes. In the various corporate meetings that they held, did they discuss building puzzles or did they discuss their bottom line? Let's be real, corporations only care about money. You know, I wish we got to see what was on the other side of that moon door. I really do. Because it's pretty clear you get teleported into a different environment. You end up in the room you stumbled into at the start after crawling through the small tunnel in the red hole. There is no way a corporation that spends untold amounts of resources and money to make a profit would waste money on having a room hidden behind an elaborate puzzle where you can read The Yellow King by Robert W. Chambers. It would just be a little bit much. So overall, the puzzles were fine. Signalis has an amazing art style. That likely doesn't come as a surprise as I described this game as an art house horror game. I have some stuff I quickly want to touch on here. The art style has that awesome 80s sci-fi art style as well as a lot of in-game political posters reminiscent of totalitarian states and other media, kind of like 1984 and Big Brother. In the base gameplay, the screen is busy with colors and environments, but the visual quality is extremely minimal. There are no fine details on anything, really. It has PS1 graphics, but it kind 
kind of looks like the gameplay is being watched through a scuffed up security camera, which is also neat because as you would likely notice while playing this game, there are security cameras following you the entire game. It makes you wonder if someone is watching you at all times, which in a horror game is an amazing thought to have rattling around the minds of your players as often as possible. When you encounter some of the paranormal threats, they blink out of reality, constantly vibrate, and ruin the camera quality like those ghosts are totally real and I filmed one type videos that for some reason always appeared to be filmed on a Texas Instruments calculator from the 1960s. It's a very cool effect, especially when the game litters the screen with nonsense as the tech in the game can't register what it's observing and in response gets overloaded. Now we jump to the cutscenes. The characters become hyper detailed, the backgrounds disappear being blurred or in some cases just being entirely red, placing the focus entirely on the often distressed expressions of the characters' faces as the world around them ceases to make sense and be recognizable. The game makes a lot of references to historical paintings, and the paintings that they show are obviously beautiful. They can come out of nowhere sometimes though. Overall, the visuals in Signalis look awesome. They interact with you, the player, they direct your focus where it needs to be. They make sure you ask questions about the game because of its style, and they refuse to fill in the gaps that could otherwise be filled in by your imagination. The visuals in this game are amazing. The soundscape of Signalis is masterfully crafted. The cries of the monsters are shrill, dissonant assaults on the senses that truly feel otherworldly. But that they could have once been human. The music, oh my god, the music. The music is amazing. Often making use of classical music and letting me indulge in my love of the classical era. The original tracks in the game are beautifully depressing and at times make use of dissonance to further communicate that everything around you is wrong. The music in this game perfectly reinforces the cosmic horror themes as well as the themes of love and refusing the loss of it against the unforgiving, oppressive force of fate. The sound of Signalis understands the power of dissonance. This was made most clear to me when in that same encounter I mentioned in the visuals section where your screen starts getting crowded with nonsense. Well, so does your sound. The otherworldly forces overload your equipment. Your radio turns on and you hear this. One of my favorite sounds in the game is the ominous save room noise. It's so good. Why am I so afraid to save my game? What is happening when I do that? This game attacks as many of the senses as it can, and the audio is another battleground this game's horror forces you onto. Especially when you get to interact with the audio in the gameplay through some of the puzzles, the previously mentioned encounter with the visuals and audio nonsense, or just distorting the once beautiful music and turning it into a herald of horror and suffering. Signalis was an enthralling experience from start to finish that had me immersed in the story and rooting for Elster to make it through to the end. It was a very confusing experience, leaving me at a loss for words, questioning what the hell was happening but keeping me engaged and wanting to see it through. I would not recommend this game to everybody. Similar to System Shock, I think a particular brand of challenge seeker would enjoy this game. If they were also in the mood to do a lot of reading and feel the endless weight of true helplessness in the face of overwhelming odds. Also if they were just in the mood to watch an art house film. Cause as with art house media, not everybody's in the mood to have famous paintings, literary works, classic classical pieces randomly referenced and thrown at you. As with most art house media, it can come off pretentious if you're not prepared for it. It can also be long-winded at times in areas where I don't think it should be, often drawing focus away from the character-driven love story that is the main plot. One thing that is crystal clear about Signalis is that there was an undeniable, ardent love put into this game. And this game deserves all the praise that it has been receiving. Hello! Thank you so much for watching the video. It means the most. Have you played Signalis? What were your thoughts? Were you as paralyzed, dumbstruck, and flabbergasted as I was when you reached the ending? Why are most survival horror villains assholes obsessed with puzzles? What's up with that? Why couldn't they have a hobby like sewing or tie-dying shirts or some shit? So, Pal World came out recently, and I've been playing the crap out of it. Holy shit! Help. It is some of the most nostalgic fun I've had in a long time. It's what my eight-year-old brain always dreamt of when I was 
playing Pokemon. What games are you guys all playing right now? Let me know. I'll read all your comments. If you like the video, give it a like. And if you want to see more from me, go stare at paintings and ponder the meaning of life and then get interrupted by zombies and then fight them and kill them with the subscribe button for me. Thank you again so much for watching. I want you to stay safe out there and have the best day you can. So I got a new camera and what's really cool about it is that I can do this.